Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. I'd like to welcome you, or we thank you for joining us for our Sunday school hour. If you please turn to number five in your hymnal, please. When I survey the wondrous cross. today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the study of your word in Sunday school and uh, the lesson that we're about to uh, continue. Lord, I just ask that uh, you please bless us with your wisdom and knowledge, Lord. Give pastor utterance and boldness to teach. Lord, have us to open up our hearts and be receptive to your word. Lord, I just pray that you please uh, guide me and direct us and take us into the morning services, Lord. We pray in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Good morning, welcome to our Sunday School Hour at Valley Baptist Church. We're still studying uh, numerology, and we are still in number one, number one. Last week we looked at the last, uh, the last thing we looked at was the first city. The first city in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 17 the Bible says and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch okay so this is the first city Enoch not to be confused with Enoch the seventh from Adam uh and then from there we go to 419, the first bigamist, the first bigamist. Uh, verse number 19 says, and, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada and the name of the other Zillah. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school hour. I pray, Father God, that you just give us what we need this morning for this lesson. Help us, Father God, to be reminded of the things that have already occurred and are recorded in the Bible for our learning. They're an example for us. Help us to learn from them. Holy Spirit, God, guide us and lead us. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Bigamist. What is a bigamist? What is a bigamist? Person with more than one wife. Person with more than one wife. Okay, so this is the very first one. Again, uh, you'll see this quite often in the Bible. Okay, 
a uh, man taking more than one wife. Uh, God has never endorsed, okay, more than one wife. God's example is in the book of Genesis, chapter uh, 1, verse number 26. And God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. That is God's example for marriage. One man, one woman for life. Now, uh, the fact that these men, beginning right here, took more than one wife, what can we learn from that? What do we learn from that? That it never really works out for good. It never really works out for good? Very good. Okay, what else? What, what, can, what else can we learn from that? The man had already gone against what God had established in him. Okay, the sinful nature is still there. Okay, we see the sinful nature very clearly right here. Okay, there hasn't been any change. There hasn't been a savior yet. Man is still in his sins, and he will do those things that are sinful. Those things that go against God's word. Okay, he will rebel and do those things that are sinful. Um, so we can learn that from that. And then also, um, what else can we learn from that? What else can we learn from that? The first bigamist. Uh, that now that he's already done it, everybody else is, it's gonna be a traditional, I mean not traditional, a, um, no, um, generational. Very, very good. Uh, very good. That's, uh, uh, again, the sinful nature. And uh, what's been done is going to be done again and again. Sin, sin spreads. Mm -hmm. Right? Sin spreads. Um, God's example was one man, one woman for life. Okay? Uh, what else? Can we learn from that? What else? That the, the, the fact that, well, the marriage wasn't, God didn't give him a woman, he took a woman. Very good. Uh, again, the sinful nature, this uh, Lamech uh, took unto him two wives, okay? And all throughout history up to now, to this point right here, uh, we're right before chapter 5, which is the first genealogy. So all, all this time, there's only been one, one man and one woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? One man and one woman. Now, God, God never endorsed that. Okay? And Lamech, who is Lamech? Who is Lamech? Is he anybody important? He's a son of Cain. He's a line of Cain that killed Abel. But is he anybody important? Do we hear any more about Lamech? No. From the rest of the Bible? No. So he's not really like one of those prominent people, right? Mm -hmm. How about those prominent people that did that? Name some prominent people that did that. David. Hmm? David. David did that? That's right. Um, and remember what your children, what your children see you do, they're mm -hmm. gonna do ten times more. And 10 times is soft. It's a soft number. Okay? Solomon, 700 wives, 300 concubines. Okay? So see the son, he, he multiplied more. Okay? So those are prominent people that did it. Any more prominent people that did it? Jacob. Jacob did it. Would Abraham be one? Abraham is another one. Okay? Now, the fact that they did this, okay, already knowing God's example, okay, it just shows their sinful nature. The sinful nature. We, we're always going to continue to sin, okay, because we have that sinful nature in us. Even though they were followers of God, they still did this, okay? What I'm trying to get that is that the fact that they did this being prominent, okay, maybe if the person was not that important, then you could overlook it and say, well, who is he? He's nobody, right? 
But it, uh, the fact that uh, somebody like Abraham did it, and David and Solomon, the wisest men, a man after God's own heart, and all of these men did it, okay? God never, regardless of the person, or regardless of how important the person was, God never endorsed it. God never endorsed it. But he did record it. Okay, he recorded it. And the book, the book of 1 Corinthians, the Bible tells us that everything that was written before time, it's an example for us. Okay? So we are to learn. We are to learn from them. Okay? What not to do. It was never endorsed. And the fact that it was recorded, and then you see their life, when you study their lives, okay? When you study their lives, not just one who took... Uh, you know, 700, but somebody like Abraham, he just took another one. Just one more. Not just one, but one, another one. We made, it, we made it two. Look at the consequences of that marriage. Okay? We're still living the consequences of that marriage. Uh, which was really never a marriage. He, he didn't really marry uh, his uh, his uh, uh his maid, he just slept with his maid, okay? And she became the uh, the mother of the father of the Arabs. And, and that's what we're experiencing right now in the world. All the wars is because of that, okay? Israel in the Middle East is surrounded by Arabs, okay? And they all come from the same family. They all came from Abraham. Okay? Abraham is the father of the Jews. Okay? But he's also the father of the Arabs. Okay? The same father. And the point is that God never authorized it. He never approved it. But he records it in the Bible so that you can see what happens when you do that, okay? So that we can learn from it, that there is consequences. To every one of our actions, there's consequences, okay? Anything else on the, the first bigamists? Anything else? Okay, then we see the first musician. Verse number 21, the first musician. And his, brother, his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as Handel, the harp and organ. Here we see, we have the first musician in Genesis chapter 4. Why is this important? How is this important? Everything's important. Everything means something, so... What can we learn from this one? Why is music important? To praise the Lord. Yeah, to praise the Lord. Music is important because we praise the Lord with music. Uh, one of the, the, the greatest organizers of music was David. Mm -hmm. He established the choir and all the musicians and their in their in their order of, of services, um, the band he, he organized all of that for the temple. Okay, so music is important. Um, and then, um, the first metallurgist. The first metallurgist, that's the person that works with metals, okay, in verse number 22, in Zilla, she also bare two volcanoes, an instructor of every artificer, and brass, and iron, and the sister of two volcanoes was Nema, Nema. Okay, again, this is working with metals. So uh, this is important. Mm -hmm. This was used for the temple, uh, the building of the temple. All the details of the, the brass, gold, silver that was used in the temple. 
okay? But also, this could also was, was also used for water, for what? At this time, what, what would be the importance of working with metal? Weapons. 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 You can make swords, mm -hmm. okay? You can make spears, tip of the spears. You can uh, arm yourself, okay? We can also look at, uh, did you have some on the way? Okay. You can also look at the, um, uh, the first manslaughter, the first manslaughter. Verse 23, and Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurts. The first manslaughter, the first manslaughter. What is manslaughter, first of all? What is manslaughter from our security guy? What is manslaughter? Um. Manslaughter would be, uh, the, well, the killing of a man, but it would be, no, what did you say? It's unintentional manslaughter, but there's intentional manslaughter, mm -hmm. which is murdering of, of a person. But it's, it's you have the intent, you planned it yeah. to do it, that's manslaughter. Yeah. Okay, well here, the, the, the theologians here say that this man, uh, Lamech, uh, fought with another man and then he killed him. So you could say it was self-defense. Uh, he did kill him, didn't intend to kill him, but in the struggle, they, they he killed him. Okay, so that is the first manslaughter in the Bible. We already saw the first murder in the Bible, and now we saw the first manslaughter in the Bible. The first worship, the first worship, verse 26. first worship and to set to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos then began men to call upon the name of the Lord okay in verse number 26 the first worship they started to call on the Lord then we have the first flood the first flood and uh, chapter 7 11 chapter 7 11 and in the six, and in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, it's the seventeenth day of the month. The same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. Okay. Um, the first flood. Why did God send the flood? Why did God send the flood? Because he saw that the intent of man's heart was evil continually, and he repented. Very good. He did. Okay, and you see that in chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And I repented of the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Okay? And so God cleanse the earth with a flood. In verse number 11, what can we learn from verse number 11 that, about this, the flood itself? What do we learn from there? What do we learn from there? Most people, when they think of the flood, they think of rain. rain. They think of rain, and the reason is, is because they had, nev had, they had not been rained before. Mm -hmm. So the people didn't know what rain was. So when when Noah started telling the people that there was going to be a flood and there was going to be rain, uh, they probably laughed at him and said, what is that? What is rain? You don't know what rain is. But the average person, when they think of the flood, they think of rain. Okay? But according to verse number 11, it wasn't just rain. From the ground, okay? And if you wonder how much water is on the ground, okay, there's a lot of water on the ground. How much water is on the ground? But if you want to know just an idea how much water is on the ground, what do you think about it? How much water does the ocean have? Okay? And so that's a lot of that's a lot of water. 
okay? So the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And so it covered the entire earth. Then we have the first, the first drunkard in chapter 9, verse 21, the first drunkard. Genesis 9 and verse number 21. The Bible says, and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered with, within his tents. Okay. Um, Noah planted the vineyards. In verse number 20, he began to be a husbandman, a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tents. Okay. What can we learn from this? Some things that we can learn from this. There's a lot to learn from there. What can we learn from that event? That event. Well, when you're drunk, you're, all of your sensibilities and the things that go out of the window. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're under the influence of? Another spirit. Another spirit. That's why when they advertise liquor outside of stores they say spirits, spirits. okay what else what else can we learn from this event god will always uh in god's word it'll he'll always uh define between the two types of wine whether it's one that makes him drunk or one very that good him. very good the text itself will always tell you people are always asking uh wine is bad or just a uh, you know, that statement like that is not true. Okay? Well, how do you know when the wine is bad and wine is good? Well, the text itself will tell you. The text will tell you, just like here it is. If it's negative, then it's alcoholic. Okay? If it's not, then it's grapes. Okay? Uh, what is the most popular uh, excuse that people use for drinking? Well, Jesus turned water into wine. Jesus turned water into wine. Yes, but not alcoholic wine. Why? Why would it be wrong for him to turn that into alcoholic wine? Because it contradicts his word. It would contradict his word, okay? But also, when he was invited to that wedding, he was in there. Mm -hmm. What was he doing in there? He was eating and and drinking, okay? So would he make himself drunk? No, absolutely not. So that, that tells you, the context tells you the type, whether it was the fresh juice or was a a uh, a alcoholic or uh, fermented, fermented is what the word I'm looking for, okay? Also, another thing to learn about wine, okay, God, did not create fermented wine. So who created it? Man. Man sinfulness created. Okay, now you, you need to know the process of wine. Okay? In order to make wine, there's a process. You don't just get it from the grape and put it in a jar and then get drunk. It doesn't work like that. Okay, you need some you need some certain steps that to, to be followed through. For it to be fermented first you need sugar okay you need sugar and then you need a temperature you need a certain temperature okay and those two combined uh, will ferment the wine the, the grapes into fermented wine okay those things that were added by a man those were not you don't get drunk by just drinking or eating grapes okay so it was a, it was an invention of man. <clears throat> you know, preacher. Yes, sir. People, it just shows you how man tried to justify his sin, uh, because uh, many of us, myself, would be drunk all the time because I eat a ton of grapes, mm. and raisins are are grapes. <laughs> just just, yeah. just and I eat a ton of raisins. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would be all I would be all messed up in the head continually, you know. And because men go, people go in the store, they buy groves of grapes all the time. Yeah. And uh, my uh, my auntie had a uh, uh, 
he had a grape vineyard uh, at the end of the street, the other dama. And we used to go down and, and harvest the grapes all the time. So the children, I mean, obviously we were little, so we were popping grapes at the same time we were you know, harvesting them. And then we would have been tanked up. Mm -hmm. But my uncle, he made wine all the time. Yeah. You know, he just put it in a jar, add some sugar. He had a cloth that he put over it. He sat it in the sun and it fermented. Yeah. And after a while, yeah. you know, and that would be, be sitting out there forever. And you can, the aroma changes in the grape. Mm -hmm. You know, just by sitting in the sun with the sugar in it and whatnot, yeah. and all of a sudden it's, it's like it's sour, but it was really got you woozy. You yeah, know, you drank it. Because one of my cousins, he he did, he drank it, and he was really, I mean, he was wheeling around. When his dad came home, his dad whipped him, but all he kept doing is laughing because he was drunk. Yeah. I'm drinking the wine. Yeah. You know, and so it, uh, but people. See, you can justify everything to uh, satisfy whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll justify yeah. it. Yeah. You know? yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll justify it to, to uh, ease our conscience. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, also, uh, <coughs> so that was the first drunkard. Then we look at the first rebellion. Chapter 11, verse 1 through 4, the first rebellion. The Bible says, and the whole earth was with one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them th thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime, had they for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And so uh, this is the first uh, rebellion, okay? And why was it a rebellion? Why does the lesson call it a rebellion? Because they wanted to go back up to heaven. Okay. They wanted to go again. Go to heaven, and what were they going to do once they get out there? <laughs> yeah. What else? They are doing for uh, the, the building of the tower was, was more for their own their own glorification to be like God in heaven than to than they being for God. Mm -hmm. It says. Nothing will be restrained from them if they're not even Jews. So it makes them think that they have some power in some sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Genesis 1 22. Genesis 1 22. The Bible says, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill. No, <laughs> that's not that. Um, and fill the earth. Okay? Verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. Why why was it a rebellion? They weren't doing what they were supposed to do. That's right. They were they were they were all together when God said so, uh, fill the earth. Yeah. Very good. Uh, can you tell my wife that the dog is on? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that dog. He wants to come to church. <laughs> so the first world rebellion, then we look at the uh, first pilgrim. The first pilgrim, chapter 12. Chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse number 4, 4 to 10. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Paran. And Abraham took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son. And all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. 
And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto, the, unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And there built he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. <clears throat> so the first pilgrim, okay? Abram was the first pilgrim. So what can we learn from this? Um, focus on the word pilgrim. Okay, pilgrim is just passing through. He's not staying. He's sojourning. He's staying for a little bit and going. He's on the move. Okay? So, <coughs> the first pilgrim. What else? Focusing on the word pilgrim. What does the word pilgrim mean? Traveler. The word pilgrim means besides or next to. Okay? That's what the word pilgrim means. What else? Focusing on the word pilgrim. We're walking in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We'll just that's why that's why it means uh, next to besides. We're we're next to the lost. Mm -hmm. We're here for for a, a, a little short journey, we're just passing through. But as we pass through, the fact that we're next to, or besides the lost, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for, that, for us to lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, the book of Hebrews tells us that all those people in the book of uh, Hebrews 11, they, were, they all realized that they, and they believed that they were what? Keep your finger here. Go to, go to Hebrews, so you can see it. Hebrews eleven. Hebrews eleven. Abraham? Mm Okay, it's verse number 13. Verse 37 and 38. Verse number 13. It's verse number 13. These all died, okay? These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them 
and embrace them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They realized that they were just pilgrims, meaning that they, they were just passing through. Okay? They, they, they were looking for a home, but their home was in heaven. And uh, verse number uh, 14 says, for they, that, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from when they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. You see that? That's us. We're going to be in the heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. So they did not receive the promises. They died believing the promise. And they died realizing that they were only pilgrims and strangers. And strangers, the word strangers there is the word for aliens. Okay? And if you look at the, 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 the true Lord's Prayer, John 17, there we see that the Lord saved us out of the world. We are not part of the world, even as I am not. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, he says. So we are just pilgrims. We are strangers now, okay, because this is not our country. We have a heavenly country that we're, we're looking forward to. So the first pilgrims, and then we see the first war in chapter 14. Genesis 14, we see the first war. And it came to pass in, in the days of Am Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Eliezer, Shedor Lamar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations. These made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinar, king of uh, Adma, and Shema, Shembur, king of Zeboism, and the king of Bela, which is Soar. All these were joined together in the Vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. So here we have a full-fledged war. Okay, nations against nation. Then we have the first incest. The first incest in uh, 19, <clears throat> chapter 19, verse number 33, we have the first incest. Genesis 19.33 <clears throat> This is the daughters of Lot And the Bible says here that They made their father Well let's pick it up in verse um, 29 for context Remember the angels went to rescue them Out of Lot okay? And they lingered and he had to pull them out by the hand Because they were lingering Verse 29 says And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, the God remember Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities of which Lot dwelt, in which Lot dwelt. Okay? So God remember Abraham. God remember Abraham. <laughs> Why what 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 specifically did God remember about Abraham there? That he made a covenant with him. Okay. Specifically. What did, what did he remember about? That Lot was family to him. That Lot was family and? Abraham had, uh, he made a, I want to say, I want to say that. He had uh, pleaded with pleaded him? with God. Pleaded with God if they, if they could find a certain number of people there that he wouldn't destroy. Like, yeah, not to destroy the city. city. Because he wanted to reserve his son, his son, his, his, nephew. his nephew. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So there, he remembered uh, Abraham, and the Bible says in thirty, and Lot went up out of his Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in the cave, and he and his two daughters. 
And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Now come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will <laughs> lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Again, the question about wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Negative. Okay, so uh, also uh, it was only, it's only Lot and his two daughters now. Okay? What happened to the wife? She died. She died. Very good. So uh, we see here the first incest. Now, it, what is important to to uh, um, look beyond that and see the result of that. Okay, the result of that. What was the result of that? Well, uh, verse thirty-seven says, "And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab." That's the, the that's the father of the Moabites. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Moabites. What's important about the Moabites? It was a wicked place. What else? Because of the children of Israel, the sin they go on down the line, the grievous sin that still is part of their life. That's right. Um, they made the they made the the Israelites to uh, get involved in their worship, mm -hmm. which involved. Uh, uh, adultery. Okay. So, uh, uh, what else? It's the land where Ruth story. Yeah, it, that's where that's where uh, the uh, uh, um, the story of Ruth. Mm -hmm. She was a Moabite. A Moabite. Very good. But 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 God used her in the genealogy. in the genealogy, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's important because it, it shows you God's grace that even though that place was wicked and they were uh, worshiping idols, God can still reach in there mm -hmm. and take anybody from whatever, uh, how bad it is or how deep they got into sin and God can pull them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's a good picture of, of salvation there. Uh, and then also verse 28 says, and he looked towards Sodom well, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, 38. And the younger also bare a son and called his name Benamin, the same as the father of the children of Ammon. Children of Ammon. So, uh, Moab and Ammon, what part did it play in Israel? Well, Ammon always attacked Israel's special when they were coming out of their 40 years, staying in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. They blocked their way. They were sworn enemies, sworn enemies, okay? Uh, Mo, uh, Ammon is today, what country? Jordan. Ammon is Jordan today, okay? Uh, the first incest, the first mention of love, the first mention of love, chapter 24, Verse 67. Twenty-four sixty-seven. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent and took Rebecca, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was what and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. His mother had just died. Okay? So this is the uh, Isaac is the uh, promised seed. Remember, Isaac is the promised seed. Okay, uh, God had promised Abraham a son. Okay, God promised Abraham a son. Abraham could not wait, or more. <laughs> Was it Abraham that couldn't wait? Sarah. It was Sarah. Sarah couldn't wait. So she got her maid named Hagar. Hagar to sleep with her husband. 
and thereby uh, having a child. Okay? But God told Abraham, I made you a promise. I'm going to keep my promise. This child from the maid is not the promised seed. This is the this is the seed of the flesh. Okay? This child from Hagar uh, was born and his name was Ishmael. Ishmael. He is the father of the Arabs. What did God say about, I mean, what did God say about, uh, about uh, Ishmael prophetically? What did God say about him? That his hand was going to always be against everyone. His sword would be against everyone. Okay? And what are they doing over there in the Middle East? And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what clan you are. Uh, like, for example, right now in Syria and Iraq, uh, we used to have ISIS in there. ISIS is starting to uh, form up again. But besides just ISIS, you still have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, groups, military groups, that have their own name, their own purpose, and they're all in there. And they're all going against each other. Okay, they're all going against each other. And then you cross the state lines, so the country lines, and you go against those of the, of the country lines. And it's just one big, gigantic pot of nothing but warfare in the Middle East right now. Okay? So the first mention of love. <clears throat> Then we move, we move to uh, number two, page 209, number two. Uh, Genesis 3.9. Genesis 3.9. Genesis 3, verse number nine. Genesis 3.9. <clears throat> this is after they have sinned, okay? They have sinned, they have eaten of the fruit of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And this is where we learn that God would walk with Adam. In verse number 8, we learn this. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse number nine, the first question in the Bible. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where art thou? Has God lost them? No. What is, what is he asking? Spiritual, spiritually, where are you? Very good. He, he's asking. He's asking his his condition. His condition. Okay. And it, it, it's not because God doesn't know where he's at. And he says, "Notice, notice in verse number ten. Okay. See, we can learn something from verse number ten. And he, Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Okay? What do we learn from that? The answer is in the verse. You don't have to make anything up. The answer is in the verse. What can we learn from that? That I knew what he did wrong. Warm, warm. Look at the way he answers. Is Adam, the way he's answering, is he confessing? Yes. Is he confessing, Rebecca? No. He's not confessing. What's he doing then? Hiding. He hid himself. 
He's not confessing. He, he says he's afraid. You see that? Is he acknowledging his sin? He's making an excuse. Exactly. He's not acknowledging his sin, okay? Mark it down and learn from it. Our sinful nature will never take ownership. Never. In our sinful nature, man will always make an excuse. He's pointing to something else. He's not saying, whoa, it's me, I have sinned. No, no. He's pointing to something else. What is he pointing at? His nakedness. Yes, sir. You know, we, uh, we use the expression when we're talking to someone and then they're getting ready to make a bad decision. You go, where's your head, man? Yeah, we use that expression, but this is it right here. Yeah. You know, we're not, I mean, come on. You know, mm -hmm. God obviously has a plan, yeah. but you're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So he is, he is not pointing, he is not taking ownership, he's not confessing his sin. Mm -hmm. Instead, he's pointing at something else. He's, what's he doing? He's deflecting, isn't he? Yeah. He's deflecting. And he says, look, I'm naked. That's the reason I hid from you. Because I'm naked. It's not because I ate of the fruit. Yeah. I mean, he's already knew he was naked. Exactly. He's so walking around forever. And, 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 and notice here how subtle this is. And when you read it, it seems like there's nothing wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you can almost go, oh, okay, that's a good answer right there. But it shows you the, the depravity of sinful nature. And that's only the first time. That's only the first time. Because when, when, when God asked them, who told you you were naked? Right? And, and uh, it, verse 11 says, and he said, who told you that I was naked? And, Has thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Again, did he take ownership? No. What did he say? The woman. <laughs> the girl over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good place to stop because I'm going to start calling. <laughs> He deflected again, not taking ownership. Rather than defend the wife and the honor of the wife, he's like, <laughs> he puts her up front. <laughs> Father God, thank you, Lord God, for this lesson. Thank you for what we learned this morning. Help us to remember that, Lord. Help us to be truthful to you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. Bless the morning service to follow in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. <laughs>